Buenos dias. Good morning. My name is Anamita Betancourt, and for our celebration of National Hispanic Heritage Month, I've been invited to reflect on today's gospel based on my perspective as a Latina. Please be seated. <laughs> I'd like to focus on love, leprosy, and Latinos. By way of introduction, let's start with love. I love St. Margaret's. I've been attending since 1989. I would not be a Christian if it weren't for this community. I was overjoyed when I met and married the love of my life, Kathy Connolly, at St. Margaret's. St. Margaret's is in my will. And someday, in God's time, I plan to be in our columbarium. Hopefully not a rush. <laughs> I love St. Margaret's. I hope you do too. Today's gospel tells the story of the miraculous cleansing of 10 people affected by leprosy. They are a group of 10 outcasts that call out to Jesus. Jesus tells them to go to the priest, they obey, and then are healed. Like any good story, the gospel includes a surprise twist. One of the 10 is a Samaritan. He has leprosy and is a foreigner to boot. He's the only one to thank Jesus and praise God. And Jesus offers him salvation despite all the strikes against him. This is a story about God's miraculous power. Only God could so instantly and completely transform the lives of the 10. For many commentators, it's also a story about obedience. The group obeys the instructions from Jesus to go to the priest and then is healed. And it's a story about thanksgiving. The Samaritan offers thanks and praise and is promised salvation. This story clearly packs in a lot. What struck me most about this story is its emphasis on otherness as represented by those with leprosy. Now, leprosy is very different from being Latino, of course. But maybe it's not surprising that as a Latina, I see otherness in a story about 10 nameless people subjected to rejection and exclusion and grouped together under a label that we now consider derogatory. When I was growing up in Puerto Rico, I was part of the Puerto Rican majority there. I came to DC to go to college. The flight from San Juan to DC is about three and a half hours or so, but in just that time, I was transformed. It was as if my flight didn't depart from San Juan, but rather took off from Hispania. Have you heard of Hispania? It's the mythical land of origin of all Hispanics. All Hispanics must come from Hispania, right? <laughs> Once on the mainland, I was grouped under a monolithic Hispanic label and thereafter treated as a minority, a person of color, a foreigner, an immigrant. One day in college, I found a hateful message on my dorm door. More than 40 years later, I can still see the vile words in my mind die. I can still feel the pain, and I can recall my naive bewilderment that I could provoke such hate just by being Latino. I have been treated as an other in my professional, personal, and even church life. Like so many Latinos, I've had my credentials and competence questioned and my accent ridiculed. In one job, my boss didn't even bother to learn my name and address me as Anita May. When I go on trips, I always take my US passport, even on domestic flights, lest I'm stopped and questioned about my immigration status because of how I look in my name. When I first came to St. Margaret's, I was frequently confused with the only other Hispanic woman then attending. Even though we looked nothing alike, it was as if people thought we were, you know, it was difficult to tell us apart. We know that many Hispanics have experienced much, much worse. Otherness is painful. Otherness is painful because it stems from false assumptions and encompasses labels thrust upon us, labels infused with ignorance, prejudice, and hate that set us apart and can have terrible consequences. Otherness is feeling dismissed, devalued, left out, excluded, ignored. Now, what does this all mean in terms of today's gospel and St. Margaret's? First, the good news. In today's gospel, we see Jesus engaging with people affected by leprosy. Metaphorically, the gospel writer could not have chosen a better group to represent outsiders. At the time, people with leprosy were deemed sinners and cast out from their families and forced to travel together and loudly announce their arrival to warn those fearing contagion. Their otherness was bleak and dramatic and no one wanted to engage with them. But Jesus engages with them and heals them and engages with the Samaritan, someone who as a foreigner is even more of an outsider. The Samaritan reminds us that otherness can take many forms and have many layers. 
perhaps you have experienced otherness, and not just because of your racial or ethnic background. You may have felt you didn't belong because you couldn't be authentic as to your identity. You may have been ignored or treated as invisible because of your age and illness or condition. You may feel excluded from your social circles after losing your partner. You may feel that your voice at work is unheard while others making exactly the same point get praise. You may feel alone, isolated by grief, trauma, or fear. Life can be overwhelming and we don't always feel connected. Even coffee hour here can sometimes make us feel on the outs. Otherness can take many forms. Then this story is also about you. There's a lot of good news in today's gospel. Jesus is transcending multiple barriers when he engages with those on the outside of the community. Jesus has no qualms about embracing otherness. God is inclusive and offers love, grace, and mercy to those who are excluded, devalued, ignored, and in pain. The gospel tells us that the path to salvation is available to all of us. All you need to do is come before God and seek to be made well. Jesus embraces otherness, yours and mine. We are called to follow suit. Here at St. Margaret's, we repeatedly affirm our commitment to diversity and inclusivity. But are we really embracing otherness? My Latino perspective is that we're not quite there yet. Becoming a beloved community requires truth-telling, learning, investment, and reconciliation. What can we do? Allow me to offer three suggestions. First, if you haven't already, you should take the Sacred Ground course. I took it, it's excellent. It will be offered again soon. It will open your eyes and help you see what needs to change and where we can all do better. Second, it's great to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, but it's not enough. We need to ensure that all of us at St. Margaret's feel that we belong here all 12 months of the year and that our identity is not erased or unacknowledged or irrelevant when it's not Hispanic or Asian Pacific American or Black History Month. At the same time, we need to feel that we are seen with all our multiple layers of identity. I'm a gay woman, a lawyer, a trained jewelry consultant for the rummage sale. <laughs> and don't ask me how or when, but now I'm a senior too. I am not defined just by being Latino. Third, our actions can be practical. Our parish suppliers, florists, caterers, contractors, and banks need to reflect our commitment to inclusivity. Our racial justice task force is working on this issue. We need to support this work, and by the way, they're looking for volunteers. Offering opportunities to new counterparties is equitable. It should not be controversial or unduly complicated, and we should just do it. Jesus embraces otherness, and so can we. I believe we can embrace otherness at St. Margaret's when we realize that God sees each of us as we are and offers us all mercy and salvation. We can embrace otherness at St. Margaret's when we realize that Latina or not, Hispanic month or not, like the Samaritan, we are each called to stand before God and seek to be made well. We can embrace otherness when we focus on what brings us together, our common prayer and our faith. Ultimately, I believe we can embrace otherness at St. Margaret's because I know that we care about each other. That's why I love St. Margaret's. I hope you do too. Amen. Wow, we need Anamita to come to preach again. <laughs> en el Antiguo Testamento, para algunas personas que tenían lepra, su lepra era causada por el pecado. Por ejemplo, Miriam, la hermana de Moisés, que quedó leprosa por criticar y hablar en mal de Moisés, porque se casó con una etíope. For example, Miriam, the sister of Moses, who became leprous for criticizing and speaking ill of Moses, because Moses married an Ethiopian woman. 
Dice, el mensajero de Eliseo se quedó enfermo de lepra por quedarse con el dinero de Naamán. Las personas eran declaradas leprosas por el sacerdote e inmundas y también comprobaban la curación. Mientras no eran verificadas limpias por el sacerdote, tenían que huir a las montañas o desiertos, lejos de la ciudad, de su familia, de su comunidad, de fe. Vivían aislados, similar como cuando una persona tiene COVID. En el Antiguo Testamento, la lepra representaba el pecado. In the Old Testament, leprosy represented sin. Cuando sentimos que hemos pecado, podemos sentirnos como un leproso ante Dios. Aquí es cuando podemos venir a Cristo como estos diez leprosos que clamaron por la misericordia de Dios. Jesús, Maestro, ten compasión de nosotros. When we feel we have sinned, we might feel like a leper before God. This is when we can come to Christ like these ten lepers who cried out for God's mercy. Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesús le dijo a los leprosos que fueran y se presentaran a los sacerdotes y mientras iban, fueron limpiados. Jesus told the lepers to go present themselves to the priests, and as they went, they were cleansed. Me gusta el gesto de este extranjero para agradecer. Era de Samaria. Viéndose sano, regresó alabando a Dios. Se arrodilló ante Jesús, inclinándose hasta el suelo para agradecerle. Qué bonito gesto de las personas que saben agradecer a Dios. I like the gesture of this foreigner to be grateful. He was from Samaria. Seeing himself healthy, he returned, praising God. He knelt before Jesus, bowing to the ground to thank him. What a beautiful gesture of people who know how to thank God. Estoy agradecido por el mes de la herencia hispana. Es un reconocimiento a los aportes que hacemos todos los que hablamos español. También sabemos que en este país hay gente de todo el mundo y todos ayudamos. I am grateful for Hispanic Heritage Month. It's an acknowledgement of the contributions made by all of us who speak Spanish. We also know that in this country there are people from all over the world and we all help. Hay algo que experimenté en mi vida espiritual y me ayudó. En mi infancia no teníamos teléfono para comunicarnos o transmitir un mensaje. Lo hicimos tocando la puerta al vecino. Era una forma de vivir en una comunidad en confianza y en amor. There is something that I experienced and it has helped me in my spiritual life. In my childhood, we did not have telephones to communicate or transmit a message. We did it by knocking on the neighbor's door. It was a way of living in a trustworthy and loving community. Para mí es un logro estar en este país y más aún hoy en mi vida espiritual ser llamado a servir en la vida de la iglesia haciendo realidad lo aprendido y transmitiendo este dinamismo hispano en fe. For me, it is an achievement to be in this country, and even more so today in my spiritual life, to be, called, to be called to serve in the life of the church, making what I learned a reality, and transmitting this Hispanic dynamism in faith. Un mensaje para aquellos que sienten que no han logrado sus objetivos. Hermanos y hermanas, 
hemos tenido la suerte de vivir. A message for those who feel they have not achieved their goals. Brothers and sisters, we have been lucky to live. Hay algunos que no tuvieron tanta suerte y murieron en el camino. Otros fueron deportados. Algunos todavía están al otro lado del río y otras están muriendo todavía en el desierto. There are some who were not so lucky and died on the way. Others were deported. Some are still on the other side of the river and others are dying in the desert. Aquellos de nosotros que hemos logrado metas, estamos llamados a ser la voz de aquellos que quieren que su voz sea escuchada y siempre tengamos una mano amiga a quienes lo necesitan. Those of us who have achieved goals are called to be the voice of those who want their voice heard as well. And we always extend a helping hand to those in need. Jesús no preguntó a cada uno de los diez leprosos, ¿de dónde eres? O si tienes documento, o son pecadores, o son santos. Él los amó a todos, aunque no todos fueron agradecidos. Jesus did not ask each of the ten lepers, where are you from? Or if they have documents, or if they are sinners or saints. He healed them all, although not everyone was grateful. Sabemos que el sistema de poder y las leyes declaran legales a unas personas e ilegales a otras, pero para Dios no son ilegales. We know that the system of power and the laws declare some people legal and others illegal, but they are not illegal for God. In general, todos somos inmigrantes. In general, we are all immigrants. Jesus said to Christian, who have had an encounter with him, go and bear witness before the rulers, because they need the life of God. Amen.